when he says go live, just I think we should start on this. Start page. on this, and then yeah, like ten. So I'll start in like maybe yeah. ten yeah. seconds. In. I got that. Hold on. Hello and welcome to historic House Park for week one of the Texas high school football season. It's also the debut of KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Yes, you heard right. He's sports director Jeff Jones, a sports anchor and reporter Tyler Feldman. It's great to have you with us here on this debut broadcast stream. Jeff, this is some KVU history. Mm -hmm. We have a great game to kick off the first week of the high school football season. The first night, a rivalry game. The 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl between rivals McCallum mm -hmm. and Anderson. Anderson leads the Taco Shack Bowl series 11 to 10. Very close. Anderson leads the all-time series 28 to 21. It's the 51st meeting all-time between these two historic Austin AISD schools. This is going to be special, Jeff, and I'm glad you're with me, and I'm glad all of you are with us watching at home. You know, the question I hear the most when I talk about this matchup, the Taco Shack Bowl, is why is it called the Taco Shack Bowl? So at the beginning of the broadcast, I figure we'll answer that question for anyone out there who doesn't know the history, and it really dates back to the late 90s when the community wanted to turn a negative into a positive. Now, as you said, these are fierce, heated rivals, McCallum and Anderson, and in the late 90s, some of the, the pranks that the students were playing on each other got a little bit overboard so the community wanted to find a way to shift that negative into a positive so they reached out to a McCallum grad who owned the taco shack and asked him to sponsor the game he hopped on board and and a bowl game was born nothing brings two communities together mm -hmm. quite like some delicious tacos from taco shack we actually had that coin toss going on right now as we show you what's happening McCallum the home team tonight Anderson the road team Jeff, these are two heated rivals. Mm -hmm. Anderson has won three of the last four matchups, but when you look back, Anderson won big last year, 49-3. to McCallum, though, the year prior, a thriller, 14-13. Yeah. to it went down to the wire. Yeah, we saw uh, Jackson Rosales, the quarterback then, actually throw a touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Not as time expired, but still very late in the fourth quarter to go ahead and win that game. So a very exciting game then, and we're hoping to see a very exciting game tonight. There are players to watch on both sides, and we'll get into that very soon. But first, there he is. first we're going to actually listen to the national anthem that is about to take place right now. some high school football <laughs> Texas style. Again, first ever KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday live streaming on KVU Plus and YouTube. Jeff Jones, Tyler Feldman, Corey Bowes with us here as well at Historic House Park. Jeff, this game, it's a special one. No better way to kick off the season. Let's talk about some of the guys we'll be watching out for tonight, starting with the big name, 1-8 for Anderson, Ed Small. As a sophomore, breakout season, Texas baseball commit, had nearly 1,200 receiving yards, 60 receptions, 15 touchdowns in just 10 games. He actually had 70 yards receiving in this game a year ago, two touchdowns. If you're McCallum, you've definitely got to try 
to double team Ed Small because he may have a last name that says Small, but mm-hmm. he's big time. Ed Small is going to come up big in every single game this season. That's my my late preseason prediction. I can still call it preseason, right? We haven't kicked sure. it off yet. Yeah, we so have my yet late to kick preseason off. prediction, Ed Small going to come up very big a whole lot. Like you said, he's a Texas baseball commit. But you know what? I think he's going to earn some football offers this year. This is just his junior season. And if you ask me, I think he is already one of the best wide receivers in all of Central Texas. We're going to see the Trojans get the ball in Ed's hands as often as they can. I'm thinking he's going to catch things like bubble passes, some intermediate routes. Of course, he's going to run some deep balls. And we might even see him take a few wildcat snaps or something like that. Ed Small is going to play a big role. You're looking at number 18 right now getting loose. Uh, Ed, they're going to call on you early and often. So we see Ed Small. How is McCallum going to counter what Small brings to the table for Anderson? When you're looking at McCallum, they're really banged up. Talking with head coach Thomas Gammerdinger earlier this week, they're missing several, a handful of some of their key pieces defensively. That means they've got some young guys that need to step up. So a lot of question marks defensively for the Knights. But if they can figure out a way to somehow contain Ed Small at least a little bit, then you maybe give yourself a chance tonight. Yeah, Ed Small's a junior. I think there's a junior on the McAllen defense who could be asked to uh, pay close attention to Ed Small, and that's Karan Lewis. He's a junior outside linebacker who actually moved down from defensive back this season, so his cover skills are out of this world. He's a guy who, when asked to bracket Ed Small in that, in that two-on-one, that double coverage that I think we'll see a whole lot, he's one who will play underneath and can cover like a DB, but can tackle and, and hit like a linebacker, a very versatile defender who uh, will play a big role against Ed Small, I believe. As you can see, a packed house here at House Park. Just a beautiful setting for some Texas high school football. The music's playing, the bands, the stands all filling up. And Jeff, this is what it's all about. Yeah, you know the fans are looking at the, the scoreboard over there. Oh, it said 138 until kickoff. Now it just says 12 minutes. The first quarter is about to start. Texas high school football is about to kick off in one of Central Texas's most historic stadiums. Tyler, I don't think there's anywhere else I'd rather be right now. There's no place I'd rather be. We're so glad, if you're watching at home, that you're with us here for this debut of KU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Streaming live on KU Plus and the KU YouTube page. Here we go. Just about kickoff time, Jeff. That's it, man. That's it. Like I said, they took the countdown clock away, so that means the time is here. The 2023 season. Let's kick this thing on off. Dash Levy, the senior, kicking things off here for the McCallum Knights. 7-4 and four a season ago, 6-1 and one a district. Lost to Anderson in this game a year ago, 49-3. Mm-hmm. They've dropped three of the last four Taco Shack Bulls, and we are underway here at House Park. Oh, here we go. Things here we right go. Oh, here we man. go. Zayden Sharp looking sharp right off the bat. Dash Great Levy. return. Dash Levy, the kicker you just shouted out a second ago, just saved the touchdown. We almost started the season with an Anderson touchdown, not on the first play from the scrimmage, but from the opening kickoff. I don't think there's a better way to start the year than that. Dash fired off uh, as he <laughs> ran up onto the sideline. You don't like to see kickers maybe throw their bodies out there as much if you're a coach and you're already banged up. Mm-hmm. When you see your senior do that, that's a good way to start after a long return for Zayden Shaw. And you don't have a choice but to throw your body when you're in that situation. Braden Gephardt, starting quarterback for the Trojans. Oh, and there's a fumble in the, the backfield. Looks to be recovered by the Trojans' Ben Hatcher. Yeah, we'll hear his, hear his name a lot. The coach's son, Donald coach's Hatcher's son. Right son. Right yeah, coach's son wearing zero. Interesting story about that jersey number. We're going to wait for him to make a good play because we know he will. Uh, he's a sophomore starting on a big-time team like this, so you know he has big-time talent. And the number of jersey he's wearing right now has a big-time story. We'll talk about it a little later. Two receivers, top of your screen, one receiver on the bottom. Gephardt, shotgun. Quick pass to his left, and there he is, Ed Small. Look at that yard after the catch, Jeff. That's blazing speed that we've come to appreciate after seeing his sophomore season now into his junior year. Yeah, we told you that they would get him the ball any way they could. That's not going to be the only quick flare-out or screen pass that we see Ed catch this, uh, this game. They like to get the ball in his hands, and you see why. 
He's able to just make things happen right when he gets it. Better than a run for Donald Hatcher speaking with him earlier this week saying that Ed Small is one of the top five receivers he's ever coached. And he's coached a lot of good receivers at the high school level. Guys who have actually played in the NFL. Third down and four from the 41. Gephardt getting the signal from the sideline. Here we go, empty set. Two to his left, three to his right. Drops back, heavy go. pressure, throws it deep. There's Smo and he makes the play. And this is where Smo. he's best. After the catch, Touchdown. he's got to make you pay. Trojans. Very impressive, very impressive. You know, he adjusts well in midair to make the catch. That's what a good receiver will do, but a great receiver will add on the yak, the yards after catch. Once he brought it down, it was him and two defenders, and you knew right away that he was going to win. When he is out there with that much space, it is hard to bring Ed Small down. And look who's the holder, Ed Small. You think they got a few fakes planned for him this season? <laughs> Maybe a few, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Gephardt said, I'm just going to throw this up. Jump ball, Ed, you better come down with it. Double covered, still came down with it. Then 10 more yards for the 41-yard touchdown. Early 6-0 lead for Anderson. Exactly how you want this ball game to start. Long kickoff return for Zayden Sharp. A few plays later. Touchdown. That ball just sneaks through the uprights. And it is 7-0 Anderson. Heck of a start for the Anderson Trojans. Looking to make it 4 of 5. The Trojans, hey Jeff, 4 and 6 a season ago, 2 and 6 in district. Mm -hmm. Probably their best win, or the win that pumped the team up the most, was this ball game a season ago. Yeah, and, and a start like this sets them up for another win like that. So. You know, things can get off to a better start than they did. The awesome kick return, get it to your best player early and often, as we predicted, and watch him do his thing. Ed Small went to go score and the ball got in his hands. I don't know that that's the last time we'll see him do that. I don't think it's the last time we'll see Ed Small do that. The trust from Gephardt to just toss it up there to Small, mm -hmm. believe that he'll come down with it. And again, talking with head coach Thomas Gannendinger earlier this week, for McCallum, they're losing some big names defensively, a handful, and that's tough. And we saw that on that opening drive with the Trojans. And you know what hurts a lot about that one is that play, I'm talking about that touchdown play if you're the Knights defense, like they were there in the backfield. The pass rush made it almost home, and when you get that close, you have to impact the passer somehow, get a hand on the ball, a hand on the elbow, something. So what we just saw doesn't happen if you're the defense. Liam McMillian kicking things off for the Trojans. Sophomore safety as well. 7-0 if you're just joining us here on KU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. McCallum receives at the 15. McCallum, okay. Drew Andrews, Pummel. Little chippiness, Jeff. Come to expect this at the Taco Shack. That's exactly it, man. That is exactly it. A little chippiness. Is that tortilla chips or what kind of chips? Hey, man, you step inside the Taco Shack, uh -huh. it's friendly. You step inside the Taco Shack bowl, Okay. all hands on, on deck. No hands in the bowl. No hands in the bowl. Maybe if they're washed. <laughs> hey, I do want to point out that that was defensive end Jack Middleton who was down there on the coverage team. When you have a, uh, a defensive end or a D tackle on your coverage team, you know that that's a high effort guy because they have to get down there and bang with the big bodies every single play. First down and 10 for the Knights. Luke Dunham hands it off to Mitchell Butler. Dunham, the quarterback, a junior. Jack Middleton making that stop. And mm -hmm. Jeff, the sidestep here to Jack Middleton. Donald Hatcher said we should keep an eye on him throughout this entire ball game. Yeah, you know, something I like a lot about him, this is Jack's first year playing defense. He moved over from offensive tackle to DN this season, so he still has that mindset. He knows uh, the different ways that the tackles pass it and how to take advantage of that. He could be a big-time player this season on the defense. Another handoff to Butler, and Butler inching closer and closer to that first down marker. Mitchell Butler, the junior, Head coach Thomas Gammerdinger saying that Butler, he expects him to have a breakout season, mm. flew under the radar a year ago. Chains have moved. It is first down at 10 for the Knights. Luke Dunham. 
Play action, hands it back off to Butler. Butler's seen a lot of action here. Gets another eight or nine yards. Hey, McCallum, give them credit. They are moving forward. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's way too early for this team to take its foot off the gas or, or do anything like that. So, you know, they came here ready to play, ready to beat a rival, and we're seeing it right now. Their first drive, they are moving it down the field. Jack Middleton again on, in on that tackle. They're running right at him. Um, I wonder what the strategy is there. Look down on the starting quarterback for McCallum. He actually played cornerback last year, so he also switching from the defensive side to the offensive ball. Yeah, and that's not a position switch that you see often. Uh, very different skill sets, even as, as, as obvious as one of them moves backwards on the snap and the other one is looking to move forward every snap. So, interesting position change, but hey, he's commanding this offense and moving them down the field. Drew Anders picking up a few yards there. One of the team leaders for this night's program this season. Senior. And in the same way that we said Jack Middleton, the DN for uh, Anderson, can still think like an offensive lineman. Well, the Knights quarterback can do the same thing, can recognize coverages quicker than maybe other high school quarterbacks. This could be an advantage, his position change. Anderson blitzing, look at Middleton, Our says, guy, good again. night. Wow. One-handed takedown, one-arm takedown. Power clean 315 pounds this <laughs> offseason, Jeff. And the story I heard about that power clean was it didn't look like a power clean. It looked like a reverse curl. So Jack Middleton, you see those, those biceps on him right there, those forearms? Well, he used that a whole lot in his power clean. 315 is what he got. 823 left here in the first quarter. Trojans leading 7 to nothing, scoring on their opening drive. Here's Dunham rolling to his right. Going to keep uh, it. Makes a man miss before he gets taken down yeah. around the 46-yard line. Jumping in there from the secondary. Colin Haynes, the junior. Absolutely loved that move by Dunham in the open field. Uh, Gage Webb was the linebacker. Looked like he had an angle, and Dunham just eliminated it. Uh, quick thinking, quick feet, quick four or five yards. Third down and nine from the 47 for the McCallum Knights. Right in that no man's land territory. See what they can do here on third down. Dunham from the shotgun. Takes a snap, rolls right. Goes left. Uh -huh. Goes left. Yeah, Thurston Roberts on that catch right there. Yeah, the senior making the grab. Not enough for the first down. Did get a few yards. Yeah, Simon Burns, one of the team captains playing Rover, and that backside contain is a very important job. You know, sometimes in high school, the backside player, they get so caught up in wanting to run and help their teammates on the other side of the field. And had that been Simon on that play, he would have run himself out of the play. So great discipline standing home on the backside, and you get a tackle because of it. Punt team out for McCallum. High oh. snap, gets away, flag thrown. Just boot it. No, he can't. Oh, boy. Trojan snuck in there. Tough situation for the Knights. Yeah, yeah. Gage Webb and Simon Burns, two guys whose names we called recently, combined for the tackle on that one. Anderson going to take over in the red zone already. Thurston Roberts just couldn't handle the snap. Flag is out, though, so we'll have to wait and see what the call is on the field. Legal substitution, penalty is declined, so Anderson takes over inside the 20-yard line. Prime opportunity, primo opportunity for Anderson to get some more points. McCallum calls a timeout. Head coach Thomas Gammerdinger certainly wants to talk things over, regroup his team after a costly mistake like that. Certainly you don't want to go down two touchdowns this early, 6.42 left in the first quarter. Yeah, and you know, so many times the uh, first game of the season, what jumps out are the mistakes, the opportunities left on the field, and the two big ones that we've seen so far. Think about that McCallum pass rush that didn't quite make it home. Well, that play ended up in a long touchdown from for Anderson's best player, and you have a mistake right here, the snap that wasn't handled by the punter. That's going to be a 60-yard swing 
an advantage for the Trojans. They get the ball in the red zone, and they're already the offense having the most success. You don't want to give them any kind of advantage. And here they are. It looks like they're primed to go up two scores. And, Jeff, we always talk about the big explosive plays. Well, so far, it's been all Anderson. Kickoff return. Touchdown. Punt opportunity there missed by McCallum. So the three biggest plays have all gone in Anderson's favor so far. Yeah, the explosive plays go in one direction, and all the mistakes are going in the other direction. Well, I mean, that, that adds up for a lopsided game. But look at the student section. Anderson Trojans, they brought it tonight. Doused in red and white. Packed house at House Park. What a sight, Jeff. Week one, Texas high school football. You know, starting things off with a rivalry game is the way to do it. I wish every team could do that. Start off with one of the biggest games on your schedule. Let's see what you've been working on all off season and give teams two weeks to prepare for one of the biggest opponents. Small gets the handoff. Any Stop. way they can get it to him. Any way possible. Hey, if you're if you're head coach Donald Hatcher, yeah. you give the ball to your best player, right? Yeah. Early and often. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've already seen Coach Hatcher thinks as a junior and small is one of the best receivers he's ever coached. Uh, one of the best receivers on that lineup that he's ever coached is actually Ryan Watts. Longhorn fans know him. He's a starting corner, about to be a two-year starter for the Longhorns. And Coach Hatcher says Ed Small has Ryan Watts like athleticism. Second down at 10 for the 17 for Gephardt. Hands it off this time to Ben Hatcher. What I love hearing Coach Hatcher talk about his son, Ben Hatcher. He's mm -hmm. only a sophomore. The older guys like to give him a little trouble. Yeah, from they time, say, hey, hey, poke a little time. fun at him, poke a little fun at him. And Ben's very um, knowledgeable and very aware of not breaking the rules. He knows he's a coach's son, and he knows what to stand for that means. So, uh, he's a good kid. Third down and nine for the 16, Gephardt. Left side, they're small. That's enough for the first down. Third down, what are you doing? You're finding small. When in doubt, go to your guy. Ed Small, about six foot, 205 pounds. Excellent size for a high school receiver. Again, this is the beginning of his junior year. <laughs> when you have 1,200 receiving yards, 60 catches, 15 touchdowns, and 10 games as a sophomore, and you're already a Texas baseball commit, that's when you know you're pretty special. And according to his dad, basketball is actually his best sport. Yeah, ankle injury forced him off the court, but uh, maybe forced him into a brighter future on the field. Who knows? First down at seven. From about the seven, Gephardt rolls left. He's got space. Looks into the corner. Oh. Just out of reach of Ben Hatcher. Not a lot of space over there in the corner. Good coverage there by the Knights. Yeah, I wish I would have seen him squeeze that one, though. It looked like it went right through the midst to me. Uh, I like what they did, though. They had trips to the boundary. Kind of just caused a lot of confusion with those DBs. But we used to call it was banjo coverage at the defensive backfield. You have three bunched up like that. One guy gets whoever cuts outside. One guy gets whoever cuts inside. And one guy gets whoever goes vertical. Uh, it looked like the DBs were in pretty good coverage there, but I like the theory by the offense. Second and seven, Gephardt rolls right. It's it. Small, that's another touchdown for the Anderson Trojans. Yep, yep. Small, just a quick stopper out there. And, you know, once things condense in that part of the field, sometimes it helps the defense, but when you're moving so quickly, sometimes it helps the O as well. That was a quick six or seven yard route turnaround. Ball's right there. Two touchdowns for the Trojans, two touchdown catches for Ed Small. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. He's on pace for a lot of touchdowns tonight. <laughs> They've had two drives, two touchdowns. What are we, midway through the first quarter? I can do that now. 520 <laughs> left in the first. 13 nothing. 14 nothing. Zane Cook through the uprights. And just like that, a costly mistake by the McCallum special teams. Mishandling the punt snap. Good territory for Anderson. It is 14 nothing with 5.20 left in the first quarter. If you're just joining us here on either KVU Plus or YouTube, Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Great to have you with us, Jeff Jones, Tyler Feldman, Corey Bowes, the ever so stylish also with us here this evening. We're so happy to have you here with us as well. 22nd Annual Taco Shack Bowl. As you look at the Anderson sideline, there's head coach Donald Hatcher. Has to be pleased with how his team is playing so far to start this ball game. 14-0. Ed Small actually had two touchdowns in this game a season ago. They won that game 49-3. to 
He's already got two touchdowns and a whole lot of receiving yards here to start this ball game tonight. A hot evening, Jeff, but as the sun sets, hopefully the temperatures cool down a little bit. We've got AC here in this press box, and that is a beautiful thing as you see the city <laughs> in the backdrop, one of the prettiest high school football settings in all of America, I'd argue. Wow. Even though I haven't seen every setting, but this is certainly a pretty one. Well, you know what, Tyler, lucky for you, you don't have to see all the things and know all the facts to have a good argument. All right? I support your argument there. One of the best stadiums in America. We'll say that. We'll say that. Love Historic House Park and love this rivalry. Callum returns the kick from about the 15. And whoa! Ball pops loose. Yep. Anderson recovers. Are you kidding me? Another turnover. Miles Chilton had it and then he didn't. And Anderson has the football now. Yet again. Three big mistakes so far in this game. They all three came from the same team. And Anderson has capitalized on the first two mistakes in big ways by scoring a touchdown. Hodges we'll Smith see, with we'll the recovery. We'll see if this one leads to a touchdown as well. Oh, Trojans came to ball tonight. Another tough break for the Knights. Another great opportunity for Anderson. Great field position yet again. Yeah, Hodges starting his sophomore season. You know, going to get a lot of special teams work. And, uh... Made a special play on special teams right there. The second drive in a row that Anderson has started in the red zone. Gephardt finds Dayton Williams. And look at Williams. The refrigerator. No one wants to bring him down. Finally, he goes down at around the six-yard line. Anderson not messing around. Six yards after contact right there. I absolutely love that. And I need to give a shout-out to who is the offensive lineman right there. Jaden Evans, the center who actually found his running back and started pushing him forward on contact. Love that. Gephardt, QB keeper, just right. shy of the goal line. Nice play there from the Anderson offense. Little play action. Thought the ball was in Dayton Williams' hands yet again, but no, Gephardt decided to keep it. Now they're inches away from a third touchdown on their third drive of this ball game. Gephardt hands it off to Williams. Easy. One, two, three. Two, one with the score. It is 2-0 on the scoreboard for Anderson. Quick 20-0 lead still with 4.26 to play here in the first quarter at House Park. Chaps, this is getting out of hand early. Yeah, it is, man. Not even, not even to the second quarter yet. This thing is already looking a little lopsided. Anderson up three scores. Uh, last year's game was kind of lopsided, and this one's starting off that way. It's really, like I said, the mistakes. There have been three huge mistakes in this game, and Anderson just has not allowed those mistakes to go unpunished. It's been field position. That's been the storyline. Mistakes and field position in favor heavily for the Anderson Trojans. Here's Cook again, right through the uprights. 21-0 Anderson. And we're still just over midway through the first quarter. Now, the, the biggest win all time in this Taco Shack Bowl series, Jeff, last year, 49-3. to mm. And right now, Anderson is on pace to blow that out of the water unless McCallum figures out a way to turn things around. Yeah, and I mean, don't, don't expect that pace to continue if the mistakes don't continue, right? If you keep on turning the ball over, if you keep on giving Anderson chances that start in the red zone, well, they're going to keep on putting points on the board. But, I mean, three, four touchdowns per quarter, I don't see that happening for the rest of this game. <laughs> Then again, Ed Small might have something different to say. At a certain point, if you're Donald Hatcher, you probably will benefit from maybe taking Ed Small out of the ball game. What's your thoughts on that, Jeff? I see the I see the reaction. Yeah, I started to wince there a little bit. I, th I think let the boys play. We're, we're a ways away from that. I mean, maybe if this thing stays lopsided through the half. Uh, but these are a bunch of young men who haven't played in a competitive setting like this in months. So you want them to get those reps, learn from some mistakes in, in real time and, and in a live set. Mitchell Butler back to receive. And he calls a fair catch. They said enough. We want the ball. We don't want any mistakes. We want to try to set up this offense. Mm -hmm. 
And you know what? Your offense right now is well rested, and they're probably feeling like, hey, had we had a chance to get back on the field, we would have made something happen. Well, right now is your chance to prove it. I'm sure Coach Gammerdinger and, and this night staff will dial up their safe plays right now. You're not swinging for the fences. You're not trying to score three touchdowns on one play. It can't happen. You just need to get in a rhythm. So I expect to see some, some short passes and some runs that they really trust in. I don't think they're going deep shots early in this draft. Hey, shout out to the McCallum sideline here. We're right above them, and they are loud despite this 21-0 score. They're doing their part. First and 10 from the 25. Flag, false start. Going to be a five-yard penalty. Jeff, mistakes. 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 Yeah, you said it, man. Saying it three times was accurate right there. And you would have thought when we saw Coach Gammerdinger before the game and you saw how rugged his McCallum hat was, that it was a good luck hat. <laughs> he said he's not a superstitious guy. Yeah, yeah. That hat has been through a lot. Maybe it could turn into a special hat tonight. If they come back in this one, I think that hat's got to be called a good luck hat. Dunham. Yep. Back to Butler. Yep. Butler, looking nice, serving up some some nice little runs here. Yeah, it looked like a little trap play to me right there. I mean, that's something that you install early on in camp. So, again, a safe play that these guys are used to. Uh, we want to get in the rhythm. So, get four or five yards here or there. You don't have to go for the huge chunk plays on every play. Second and nine from the 26. 3.56 to go here in the first quarter if you're just joining us. Dunham. Little pitch to his left. Yep. There's Butler. Big seam. Big block out in front. Butler bounces free. He's across the 50. Down around the 44-yard line. Taken down by Thomas Benitez. Butler keeping things going here for this McCallum offense. Very nice run. And got to give a shout-out to the offensive lineman, A.J. Wolf, number 56. He's the one who Butler actually ran into about 15 yards into the run. Oh, and you know what? I was going to say it looked like they could have called him for a hold, and they did. The block was great. The effort was great, but he hooked him a little bit. Hey, if you have an offensive lineman holding somebody 20 yards downfield, that means they're giving max effort. And I'm okay with I'm okay with effort penalties. You saw that little shrug there from head coach Tom Gammerdinger. Couldn't believe it when you have a big splash play like that. That would have certainly helped this McCallum offense. Now it's first and 10 from the 36. 3.44 to go here in the first. Dunham hands it back to Butler. Butler cuts out, cuts in. Taken down by Gage Webb around the 41-yard line. So another five yards. Butler keeps pushing forward, keeps those feet moving, Jeff. Yeah, I, I like this. I like this. And again, I told you early in this drive, I didn't want them to come out frantic, you know, looking to make up for their mistakes on one drive because you can't do that. But this drive is slow and methodical. They're in control of this. This is how you get back in the game. Not always with huge splash plays. Set it up like this. Second and four from the 42. 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl. Dunham from the shotgun. Oh, yeah. Pitches it back to Butler. Same setup. Butler spins his way to about the 49-yard line. Some extracurriculars in the backfield, too. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And then like, they're being friendly now. They said good good little battle there. Yeah, yeah. Looked like uh, that Liam McMillan, the Anderson safety, got tangled up with an offensive line. He was severely outsized. And uh, I think he saw that he was outweighed by about 80 pounds and said, you know what? We can be friends. Go get tacos after the game. <laughs> Breakfast tacos, if you're me, Jeff, any time of day. First and ten from the 49. We're going to dive deeper into that in a little bit. Looking forward to that, Jeff. Oh, Who Middleton else? right up the middle says, hey, it wasn't me. Don't arrest me for that play. <laughs> oh. Yeah, man, the best player on the field so far on the Anderson defense. You can't leave him unblocked. It's astonishing to me that last season this guy played offensive tackle because he looks like he's at home. <laughs> yeah. He's at home playing DN, and he's at home in the uh, McAllen backfield. Yeah. He's at home at House Park. There we go. Feels right at home at the house. Dunham, second and 13 for the. <laughs> We've got little, flags. A little delay on the flag there. We've got little, flags. A little delay. <laughs> We've got multiple flags.
you know, Tyler, while they uh, explain this penalty, I do want to go ahead and say we're, I'm getting some photos right now of people who are watching the live stream. I want to give a shout out to our friend and, and uh, media colleague Danny <laughs> Davis. Danny and his son Charlie are watching the live stream right now, enjoying some local high school football. Thanks for your support, guys, and thanks for uh, supporting these kids. So we at least have two streamers. Well, two sets of eyes, one TV. I think that only counts as one stream. Four eyes, though. Yeah. That's the biggest number you could get there. Middleton again, untouched. That dude's a beast. Does Middleton have more TFLs than we have eyes right now? Probably. Uh, maybe. Maybe. McCallum's going to need to figure out a way to somehow prevent that from happening again. Yeah, you know, there are certain run plays where you do leave the end man on the line of scrimmage unblocked. You can't do that to 91 anymore. We saw McCallum line up earlier this drive where they had four offensive linemen when you combine the guards, tackles, and tight ends all to one side. That was the left side away from Middleton. I wonder if they can flip that and... Uh, Try to stop or slow down the best player on the Anderson defense, the guy who's been giving them fits all night long. Third down and 11 from the 48, 120 left here in the first quarter. Dunham drops back, rolls left, keeps it himself. He's got room, he's got space. Out of bounds around the 46-yard line. Just shy, about four or five yards shy of a first down. Decision to make here. Decision to make at this part of the field. Obviously, you're not kicking a field goal, but I don't know if you're putting either. You're down three scores. You're trying to get some momentum. You can move it. Offense looks uh, like it's staying on the field, and I like that call. Hey, Gammerdinger must have heard you from up top here, Jeff. Fourth down and five for the 46. So you got a mobile quarterback. I think you get him out in space. Let him make a decision. Is somebody open? Can I hit him on the run? Or do I take off? Remember, quarterback played corner last year. He's an athlete back there. Luke Dunham, head coach, Thomas Gammerdinger, telling us earlier this week he runs and Keeping throws it on well. The he gives it to Drew Anders, the senior, one of the leaders on this team, and just not enough push. They're short. Not sure that was the right play call, Jeff. I don't think so. I don't think so. And you know, a lot goes into those decisions. They obviously know their team better than we do. So you got to trust them. But like I said, you have an athletic quarterback. I think you put him out in space and give him options. Uh, if you're going to run the ball, then make it a, a zone read or something where your quarterback has options where at the snap you're not dedicated and, and shackled to one play. I would say aggressive decision, yep. safe play call. Though. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so Anderson takes over again. Great field position. Remember when I said I wanted McCallum to uh, not stay conservative, but to play safe on that last drive, methodical? I want to see Anderson go for the throat. Gephardt hands it off to Hatcher. Hatcher showing off the speed, breaks one, two, keeps his feet going. 13, 14 yard gain for the sophomore. Hey, team likes to mess with him. He likes to mess with the Knights, it looks like. Yeah, and you know, now is the time to tell that story about number zero. Agent zero, Ben Hatcher, actually wore number 20 last year. When he moved up to varsity, instead of keeping number 20, which his dad, the uh, head coach Donald Hatcher, used to wear when he played, he decided to give that number 20 to a senior, Jet Jackson, defensive back. And Jet's family, number 20, is very special. Jet's dad wore 20, Jet's granddad wore 20, and Ben allowed Jet to wear 20 this senior season. Gephardt dumps it off. Wide receiver screen for small, and small with a big gain does it again. I don't know if McCallum has an answer for him, Jeff. I haven't seen one yet. You know, we said it before the game started at the top of the broadcast. However you can get the ball into number 18 hands, you do. And that's what they've done. We've seen him catch the ball uh, on, on the Anderson side of the line of scrimmage and make a team or run out of it. Any way you can get the ball to him, do it because he's going to make four progress. First and ten from the 44, 30 seconds left in the first. We've got missiles. Did you see Small there, the way he made that catch, knowing the play was dead? Ridiculous. He said, let me show you something. Yeah, yeah. My name is Small, my hands are big, watch what I can do. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on. Come on. How good do you have to be to make the highlight reel in a play that doesn't count? Ticks left on the first quarter clock here at Historic House Park. Gephardt hands it off. Hatcher ripped down around the 40, 38, 39. 
Yeah, and some guys just have that extra whatever it is in them, just that extra courage, fight, that mentality to get every single yard on every single carry. Patrick could have gone down pretty easy there, and he chose not to. He was fighting at the end of that run. I like that. That's going to gain him two more yards on every run he has, and that'll add up over the course of a game and a season. Well, Jeff, we know he's not a troublemaker. It's not in his blood. He's going to do everything he can to not get in trouble. That'll do it for the first quarter. Anderson, 21. McCallum, 0. McCallum giving Anderson all the big chances, all the big opportunities, the great field position. The Trojans certainly taking advantage. Ed Small, a big factor, but certainly the mistakes from the Knights. Yeah, you know, and really, like, Anderson's doing their job on offense. Ed Small is as good as advertised. I, I said at the top of the show that uh, he doesn't have many big-time D1 football offers yet. I do think that that will change this season. Um, but... Anderson's offense has kind of just been doing what they're supposed to do, capitalizing on the opportunities. I guess we can say they're forcing McCallum into mistakes, but really McCallum is uh, volunteering some of those mistakes as well. they got to clean that up to make this game competitive. 21 to nothing. Anderson scoring on all three of its drives to start this ball game as we get set for the second quarter. We're looking right now at Ryan Watts. You know, we talked about uh, Ryan Watts being one of Donald Hatcher's former receivers. Coach Hatcher told us that Ed Small may be a top five wide receiver he's ever coached. But I asked who was in that top five, and Ryan Watts, who was a current Texas corner, was on that list. Second down and 12 from the 36 for the Trojans to start the second quarter up 21-0. Fourth drive of the ball game for Anderson. Gephardt has to get rid of it quickly. There's Dane Williams. A couple stutter steps. Keeps his feet moving. It's down to about the 32, 33-yard line. Didn't have a ton of space, but kept his feet going. Yeah, and the guy who made the tackle right there is Mark Sanchez. He may be the best athlete on this McCallum team, number two for, uh, for McCallum. He's going to play both ways. Maybe he'll get 100, maybe even 110 snaps tonight. Uh, we saw him hold true to his fundamentals on defense tackling the outside knee of a big ball game. Third and eight from the 32 for Anderson Gephardt from the shotgun. Drops back, a lot of room to run. He breaks up the middle, keeps it himself. Good blocking downfield. Hatcher with a oh, big wow. block, and he bulldozes past the 20 at around the 19-yard line. Big-time play for Gephardt. Yeah, Jax Hicks, the free safety on the wrong side of that collision at the end. This is Jax's first varsity game. He's a sophomore. Earlier, Tyler, you told us that there are four key defenders for the Knights who are out in this game due to injury, and uh, they're being replaced by some young talent. Jax, one of the young guys, made the stop on the play. Jax, like Jeff said, first varsity game. Replacing Gus Ellers, a junior, serious injury for Ellers. We're told he's actually out for the season, unfortunately. If you look on your screen toward the left, we see number 13 for McCallum. That is Ed Bamba. He's a senior, a team leader. He was a guy who I was watching on that last play. He actually looked to me like he beat a double team, but kind of got held. And so as Gephardt, the, the quarterback, was breaking through, you know, Bamba's looking around like, where's the flag, where's the flag? And, and I'm with you there, big man. It did look like he got held. Coach uh, Gammerdinger told us that Ed is about six foot four, 220 pounds, looks like a big-time college football player. He's dedicated to academics, though, so he may or may not choose to play at the next level. But as you can see on the screen, he's got the size, and I believe he's someone who we could see in the Anderson backfield later in this game. Hey, and he's got the last name Bamba. That's a great last name, Jeff. Great last name, great it's song lyrics, just great vibes. Bamba. Great socks. You ever worn some Bombas socks? I'm wearing Bombas. Really? I have them on my, we want to get the camera down here or save that for, for maybe after the game? We don't need to show off your expensive taste. <laughs> you can't smell through a, through a monitor. Back to football. Let's see what's going on on the field. Away from feet and towards football. Anderson <laughs> smelling a 28 nothing lead possibly. We'll see. First and 10 for the 19. Gephardt steps up and there's your boy Bomba. How about Calvin that? Calvin Cathy there How as well. That? The two ends. Ending with a little shared sack in the backfield. The timing doesn't get much better than that, does it? We just gave Ed a shout-out, and I told you he could be in the Anderson backfield soon. He was. You know, I'm sure coaches told him after that play, Ed, you're going to get held. You're too big, too strong, too fast. Find a way to be good enough to get back there and fight through the hole. Calvin Cathy also there on this stop. Apparently, we're told he squatted 600 pounds, Jeff. 
And then they told him to stop. Yeah. He said, could go over 600, enough. they said. Gap part. Looks left. Doesn't see anything. Keeps it himself right up the middle untouched until about the 17-yard line. Jeff, what a decision. That's a quick decision right off the plate. Saw that Ed was covered, double teamed, and made the quick decision to go right up the middle. Yeah, and I couldn't tell quite, quite right away if that was a decision or if that was a play call. If it was a play call, I think it's brilliant because we've seen Ed Smart get those, Ed, Ed Small get those those now routes over and over again. Um, I did see 53 Jaden Evans, the, sen uh, the center downfield blocking, so it could have been a play call. Get part, looking deep, Whoop. find Small. Inside the five and stretches over the pylon for another touchdown. Third touchdown of the game for Ed Small. It is 27-0 Anderson. Three touchdowns in the first half. The junior looks like he could be, I mean, at least an all-conference player, if not more than that. And remember, this is his second or maybe third best sport. Jeez. I just love the story about his dad, Calvin, this is from head coach Donald Hatcher saying that his best sport was probably basketball, yeah. but broke an ankle freshman year as Cook threw the uprights again, 28-0. Anderson, 9-46, still remaining in the second quarter. Jeff, this game getting out of hand very early. Yeah, yeah, this one. And uh, I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything from McCallum. You look at some of the best players we've seen on the field. Middleton, Small, Gephardt, Hatcher, the playmakers. It's been on the Anderson side. They've been wearing white. You know, Bamba showed up a little bit on this last drive. Uh, we did know that he was going to be one of the better players for McCallum. But with this kind of deficit, 28-0, to zero, I don't know that it's a defensive end who's going to bring you back in this one. Uh, maybe he can help keep 28 at 28, but... You gotta have somebody on the McCallum offense. And that, that run game was clicking on the last drive, but they gotta find a way to put points on the board. Well, we saw Ryan Watts on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Does he have any high school availability left? I know he's got the relationship with Donald Hatchard of Anderson, but is he available to maybe assist McCallum? I don't know how Steve Sarkeesian would feel about that. You know, I like to research a lot of things before I give answers, but Tyler, I'm pretty confident on this one. <laughs> the answer is no. Love that confidence, Jeff. You know, a confident. I said pretty confident. I'm not. A pretty confident pretty. Jeff Jones is a scary Jeff Jones. Fair catch, calling around the nine yard line. They'll get it at the 25. McCallum looking to put points on the board for the first time tonight. Will this be the series for the Knights? The run game was working last drive. I think you stick with that. At this point, 28-0 with nine minutes left. You gotta find, you gotta, you gotta get that zero off the board before halftime. Obviously, it'd be great if you could get two scores before halftime, but you gotta get one. And you'd like to see this offense piece together like a six-minute drive. Take some time off the clock, regroup at halftime. You never know what can happen in the second. First down and ten from the 25. Dunham. Dumps it off to Butler. Butler with speed around the outside. Looks to have gotten the first down. Pushed out of bounds around the 35-yard line. Yeah, I like a lot of things about that play. You know, the best way to slow down a pass rush is, of course, screens and drops. And so we see a screen right there. It's a high probability play. So it's essentially as safe as a run, except you get your guy out in open space. You've eliminated 91 Middleton, who's giving you fits all night. I like that. Maybe you slow down the rush a little bit, and you can get the pass game moving as well. First and 10 from the 35, Dunham takes the snap, hands it back off to Butler. Butler right up the gut, another 10 yards, and he's keeping those feet moving until he's brought down around the 45. Nine thirty-two left to play here in the second quarter as the sky darkens here with the city in the background. 28-0 Anderson scoring on all four of their drives so far in this ball game. Trojans it's, making quick work at his Taco Shack Bowl. It's been Ed Small just showing off what he can do, whether it's catching passes behind the line of scrimmage, down the field. Wow, timed that up perfectly. Botch snap, 
flag on the play, and there's Middleton on Dunham's back. He, he didn't really appreciate it. He got up a little bit quickly there. <laughs> Simon Burns got in on the play late there. He came off the left edge from his defensive back position. He timed the snap up perfectly, and I don't know if that's uh, some film study that he did, if that's just getting lucky, or if they're down there and they have a tail on the McCallum line. Uh, he timed that up perfectly. Could be ripe for a, uh, a two count and a quick five yards for the Knights. Jeff, I thought the stands here on the McCallum side were clearing out. I said, wait, it's a little bit too soon for that. It's just the band mm -hmm. getting ready for halftime. Got to get back in tune with the high school football season. <laughs> and hey, you're just joining us. Debut broadcast stream of KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Special night here at House Park, Taco Shack Bowl. 28 0 Anderson over McCallum right now, under nine to play in the second quarter. Dunham from the shotgun. Right to wow. Butler and Middleton making some more noise in the backfield. That's just too easy, Jeff. When you give it to Butler every time, Middleton starting to guess right. Yeah, and, and you make know, the right reads. The first play they ran was intended to slow him down, a screen to his side. He was slow for about two or three plays, but after that, he's getting ramped up now. He's trusting his instincts again, and uh, he's playing like we've seen him play all night. 91 has been scary. I'd say it's not even Halloween yet, Jeff. We're talking about scary. Maybe I'll dress up as Jack Middleton, get a 91 jersey. Best Bullet. Halloween costume you ever wore. What is it, Tyler? Uh, Thunder Buddies. <laughs> Thunder Buddies? I have no clue what Thunder Buddies is. Is that... Now I'm going to have to think of the movie. It's with... Uh, uh oh Testing the movie knowledge. I saw Teron Hall getting a little testy out there. Offensive lineman for McCallum standing up for his team. Woo -woo. Shoving the Taco Shack Bowl. I'm okay with it. Ted. Ted. The movie's Ted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Mark with the, Wahlberg. Uh, and the little teddy bear. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane voices it. He's a family guy guy, right? Don't worry, yeah. Don't uh, worry. I've got Google on my phone. Quick little search. Balancing more than one thing up here in the broadcast booth tonight. <laughs> to say the least. Third and five for the 49. That toss wow. play to Butler. Middleton's right there from the backfield to drag him down. He's all over the place. And, and what I want to point out is you said Middleton is right there, and he was at the end of the play, but he came from the backside. The pursuit, the effort, the speed, the length. You saw it all on that play. 91, again, it, a play in the backfield. I'm just so impressed by this guy. If I'm Ryan Watts, mm -hmm. I'm going back to Steve Sarkeesian and say, you've got to come check out this 91 yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He reverse curls 315, plays offensive tackle and D end. Hard to do much better. 644 and ticking here in the second quarter. Fourth down and five from the 49. So last time we were in this situation around this part of the field on the other side of the field. I think there's a difference of maybe two or three yards. They dialed up a run play that I didn't really agree with. I want to see what they're dialing up now after the timeout. Gammer Dinger calls his second timeout of the half. Talk things over. Jeff, if you're in this situation down 28-0, mm -hmm. You're right at midfield, fourth down and five. You've got to go for it, right? Clock's ticking. We've just been corrected by Herb. That's why we got Herb up here. Uh -huh. That was the final timeout of the half. Oh, all right. Well, hey. We're going to have to give Herb credit on this broadcast now. Wasn't planning on it. All I did was bring him chips and Coke to, to sip on and, and enjoy. Is that Diet Coke or you get the full one over there? We come here full Coke. Wow, the good stuff. All right. Although a lot of people seem to like Diet Coke. So, very gracious of Herb and the rest of the staff up here dealing with our noise. Herb says we're all right, which that's a big compliment. <laughs> Knowing Herb, that's a big compliment. Uh, all right, seems a little low for the standard. I... Herb, can you give us good? Can you give us good? Get a head nod, yes. Barney's definitely like they're doing great. <laughs> he told me he loves cave view, so we, we've got that in check. A cave viewer. Love it. So no timeouts left for McCallum. They just used their final timeout. 6.32 to play here in the second quarter. Dunham drops back, looks deep, keeps it himself, and he is going to be brought down in a big way. There's Middleton 
in the backfield, and Jesus Antonio Soto, another one of those key defensive players for the Trojans. Yeah, uh, you know, I like that it was a pass play, so your quarterback has options. I didn't love that he rolled into the boundary, but it's his sideline, so I'm okay with that. Things just feel a little more, a little friendlier when you're rolling to your sideline. Nobody broke open, and of course, that Anderson defensive line has been in the backfield all day, so it was just a matter of time until they got there. What I did see, as far as McCallum catching a break on that one, it looked like the tailback jumped off sides a little bit, sort of shuffling forward. They let him play on that, on that down and. You know how to say ball don't lie? Ball don't lie. I guess that's what happened there. I think that's a radio show in town. <laughs> hey, uh, Dunham just not a lot of time in the backfield to make a decision. It's got to be just like that. Anderson D-line getting there quickly. There's Gephardt to Small. And Small, that guy, he's got the moves. He's got the moves. And that's actually Max Gerlich, the junior, and for Gephardt now we're seeing Gerlich Donald Hatcher saying he's really got two options at the quarterback position. Now we're getting our first look at the junior, Max Gerlich. He says Max Gerlich a little bit taller, a little bit more of the arm as opposed to the legs. But now we get our shot to see number three for the Anderson offense. Flag was on the play, though. Bringing back the Anderson offense. And Gerlich played at Dell Valley last year. You know, when I talked to some of the JV guys earlier today and I asked them, what do you like about the Anderson offense? These are Anderson JV players I'm talking to. The first name out of their mouth, Ed Small, of course. But the second name was Max Gerlich. Didn't get the starting quarterback today, but don't mistake that for him not being prepared or talented. Uh, this guy can go. First down and 37 from the 45. Hand off to Zayden Williams. Zig zags and drags his way across the 40. Calvin Cathy coming in late with that hit. Yeah, when I think I it could have been that, called. When I saw that, I thought a flag was going to come out. And I don't know. In a game like this, that's getting a little lopsided. You know, those chippy shots that are um, kind of could kind of go either way can sometimes add up to something ugly. So I hope that that's not the start of something bad. 5:44 remaining here in the first half. 28 nothing Anderson. Second down and five from the 38. Gerlich. Ed Small in motion. Fumble in the backfield, and I think Gerlich was able to hop on it just in time. First mistake we've really seen from Anderson tonight. And that's how you change a game. Remember, that's how this game got out of hand, is the mistakes on one side. Now, if McCallum sees those mistakes, those opportunities coming from Anderson, you have to take advantage of those. I don't know that there was much else they could have done to jump on that ball, but you got to have those, those balls bounce your way if you're going to come back. Third down and eight from the 41. Five minutes to go. Garlic scrambles mm -hmm. left, looks deep. Just in time, finds Tristan Wadalike. Acrobatic catch, and look at the patience from Garlic as a junior. Pretty impressive, Jeff. Yeah, the patience was impressive, and seeing the pressure in his face and not uh, tensing up. You know, missing that pass because Jax Hicks, the uh, safety from McCallum, was bearing down on him. Jax looked like he hit him right as he let go of the ball. That ball still found its mark. That's kind of what we saw in that first Ed Small touchdown. Gerlich going deep into the corner for Small. Airmail. Good try. That back right corner here at House Park. That was double coverage on Small. Thomas Gammendinger, head coach for McCallum, telling us earlier in the week that was the game plan. If you put it in the vicinity of Small, you give him a chance. Ed just didn't have a chance to make a play there. Yeah, yeah, the coverage looked nice. And honestly, I think if that ball was inbounds, it could have been picked. So good news for Anderson. It was one, one maybe two yards out of bounds. Don't say that to Ed Small, Jeff. <laughs> Gerlich, second down and 10. Hands That's it off to Zayden Williams. Look at the space. He's got all kinds of room and flips into the end zone. They're going to say he's down at the one-yard line. I got to give it to Finn Corrigan, the, the senior cornerback who was probably outweighed by 40 pounds on that play. When I saw that matchup in the open field, I thought that was a touchdown. Uh, Finn stuck his nose in there and made a play at the goal line. You know, make him snap it again. You don't know what can happen. Williams. No, it's Gerlich, and Gerlich well, QB sneaks it in. For the fifth touchdown of the game on the fifth drive of the game for the Anderson Trojans. They've scored on every single drive so far tonight. 34 to nothing. 4.08 to play here in the second quarter. Gerlich was able to masterfully dictate 
a nice little offensive drive there the first time we saw action from him tonight, Jeff. Yeah, the Anderson offense playing so well that the fans aren't even excited about a touchdown anymore. You see that? That's the Anderson student section just looking kind of ho-hum. Hey, this is what we do. We get the ball and we score. So far, they're right. That is what they do. And Zane Cook's been cooking on that extra point. 35 nothing. Jeff, at this point, I'm starting to think about what I'm getting at Taco Shack. So what's on your mind? Kind of feeling breakfast tacos at night. I'm a little bit of a pro breakfast for dinner guy. I love the dinner meal, that time of the day, the family aspect of dinner. <laughs> Everyone sits at the table, but I love breakfast. So why not have the best of both worlds? Yeah. Maybe a sausage, egg, and cheese. Around the table. Maybe a carne guisada. At like 11 p.m. Mm. Okay. That's okay. late, but, you know, on a night like tonight, kickoff for high school football this season on yeah. a Thursday night on KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday mm -hmm. debut broadcast stream mm -hmm. on KVU Plus yep. and YouTube, Jeff. Love it, love it. A lot of good right there, a lot of good. Since we're talking breakfast tacos, got to go ahead and say chorizo, potato, and egg. That's the way to go. If you can't do that, you got to do a little migas. Those are my two go-tos any time of day. If there's one thing Jeff knows, it's sports. If there's another thing Jeff knows, it's probably food and grilling. If you haven't seen his game day grilling series, the man on a grill, it's quite the combination. You know, I just, I'm a guy who likes to have fun on the grill, and I've learned a thing or two along the way. I have probably two or three dishes that I think are, dare I say, restaurant quality. What, what dishes are you serving up at a restaurant? You know, if I if I have the Feldmans over, you know, <laughs> great decision. First if, of all, if I have them over and I'm trying to trying to show you one of my better dishes, I'm actually going kind of home style meal. We're gonna go with some smoked jalapeno meatloaf. We're going with some homemade mashed potatoes. You're gonna see a smoke ring when you cut into that meatloaf. It's gonna be delicious, Tyler. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> I want to eat my peanut butter and jelly halftime sandwich. <laughs> Dunham direct snap. Keeps it himself, Middleton, again. How many times have we said his name tonight? Once again from the backside. So some of this is talent. Some of this is smarts. Again, moving over from offensive tackle. He knows how offenses think and how offensive linemen think. But a lot of Middleton's plays have been just pure effort. When he's making these rundown tackles, especially rundown tackles for loss from the backside, all that is is effort, motor, and college coaches like that. Second down and five from the 30, 330 left in the second quarter. Anderson up big, 35 to nothing. That pitch play to the right to Butler. Yep. Butler finding a seam. Big block ahead there by Henry Snyder. Best lineman on the team, according to head coach Thomas Gammerdinger. And he's one of the team leaders, and he came up forward there with the big block ahead for Butler. Yeah, I saw Braxton Bishop out there as well, I believe. So two Offensive lineman out there leading the way. Got to love that. Again, effort. Effort will get you a long way. We applaud effort up here in the press box and down below on the field. First and 10 from the 38. McCallum trying to find some points before halftime. Butler untouched up the gut. Another first down. They're going to say he's one yard short. Now they're going to say he got the first down. Chains are moving, and so are the Knights. Liam McMillan with a touchdown-saving tackle. If he misses that tackle, I'm not going to say this whole game has changed, but the momentum punch that McCallum is looking for, uh, oh. No huddle, miscommunication. Butler runs into Dunham. Ball pops loose. Anderson says they have it. Officials say they have it. The ball is back in the white, blue, and gold. Well, I just said that M-word, didn't I? Momentum. Big plays, turnovers, big mistakes. They can all lead to big momentum shifts, and we just saw another one. Anderson, once again, takes over on their side or on the uh, McCallum side of the 50-yard line, short field. I assume they're going to do what they've done all night. And, Jeff, that's been the story of this ball game. McCallum mistakes leading to great field position for Anderson, and Anderson using their most talented players to find the end zone. Sixth drive of the game. They're looking to go six for six here in the first half. First down and 10 from the 44, trips right. Gerlich steps up, looks deep, fires deep for Small. He has Small. Home run ball just overhead on the coverage there for McCallum, number eight, Miles Chilton. 
They went for it, Jeff. And if you're Gerlich, you didn't get the start, hey, let's make some plays. Yeah, yeah. Flag on the field, though. Anderson moving in the wrong direction. Yeah, I think we got to go ahead and give another shout out to Miles Chilton. He's covering the best player on the field, man to man, down the field right there. Things haven't gone their way so far. He's in great coverage. Even had the pass been on the money, and it was overthrown a little bit, but had it been on the money, I like where Miles was. I think he was prepared to uh, keep the top on the defense right there. First down and 20 from the 46. Another flag on the field, another handoff to Zayden Williams. Williams gets five or six yards, but we'll have to wait and see. Tony Andrews, one of the twins on the team. Tony and Drew are twins. We're told that they're not the biggest guys on the field, but they play hard, they hit hard. Tony showed that right there, taking down the big man in the open field. And when you put their initials together, it's TD, Tony and Drew. Well, that's a great omen, isn't it? They were meant to play football together mm -hmm. on the same team and get TDs. 2.49 left here in the first half. Ball's at the 49-yard line. Here we go again with the Anderson offense. First down and 15. Trips right. That's Zayden Williams in the backfield. Fake to Williams. Across to Hatcher. Hatcher with nowhere to go. Brought down in the backfield. Karan Lewis there making the stop. Yeah, so Lewis, there as well. Lewis and Miles Chilton back there. And when you have a receiver like that, a ball carrier of any position, alone and there are two of you right there one of you has to hit them wrap up and hold them up so your teammate can rip that ball out i expected to see at least that effort on the play didn't quite get there clock is ticking approaching two minutes second down and 20 from the 46 any way you can small in motion handoff to small he's got nowhere to run all of a sudden this mccallum defense breaking through tony andrews there as well as thurston roberts Making a couple big stops. I think I saw my man Ed Bamba back there in the backfield as well. A lot of numbers. A lot of guys <laughs> in the backfield in blue with the silver lids. That McCallum defense back-to-back -back big plays. Third down and 25 from the 41. What do you do here, Jeff, if you're Anderson? I think it's a screen. You know, you don't have to force anything. Just keep the momentum on your side. A few yards and a punt is okay. Trips left. Garlic. Across the middle, finds Tristan Wadalik, called the unsung hero. Without Ed, he'd be the guy. That's what we were told. Mm -hmm. Well, early in this game, you asked when is the right time to let Ed kind of take a break on the sideline. We might see that in the second half, and could be Wadalik time. Anderson now back across midfield, fourth down and 10 from the 44. They're going for it. Minute 24 left here in this first half. Trips right. Dayton Williams in the backfield. We've got whistles. Hold up. Anderson calls a timeout. Herb, how many timeouts left for Anderson? Herb tells me Anderson has two timeouts left. I think Herb just became our timeout guy. I like that. That is that an unpaid position or... We'll have to talk to the uh, to the bosses. Okay, okay. Herb says he just wants more Coke and more chips. I mean, talk about greedy. <laughs> Not enough up here for you, Herb? Maybe tacos. Yeah. Tacos. We've got we've to be we, – Herb's right. We've got to reevaluate. We've got to bring more than just chips next time. It's good to, it's good to be kept honest like that. That's all I have Herb up here. Minute 23, left of the second quarter. Following the Anderson timeout, offense is back on the field. They're going for it. Fourth down and 10 from the 44. Garlic, the snap, the drop back, over the middle, small, just overhead. Thought he could have brought it down. I think he was scared. 
maybe not scared, but he felt a little bit from Finn Corrigan there on that McCallum defense. You know, double Finn action on that play. We actually saw Finn Callaway, the senior DN, kind of in the backfield, speeding up the uh, the passer's progression, and then we saw Finn Corrigan on the coverage. Looked like he might have been able to come down with the interception. Good thing he didn't because he would have lost about 20 yards field position. So for the first time all game, Anderson fails to score on a drive. They were they were five for five, now five for six. Big stop. You want to talk about momentum, Jeff. See if McCallum can get some points. Minute 18 left. Butler up the middle. Breaking through. Yeah, the inside of that McCallum offensive line has been special. I'm talking about Cal Geisler, Teron Hall, A.J. Wolf. Those guys have been opening up holes in the inside really all game long. They're getting five, six, eight yards a pop. Dunham back to Butler. Great move. Cuts in, spins out. Finally wow. taken down around the 40-yard line. Jesus Antonio Soto there on the tackle. 49 seconds left. No timeouts if you're McCallum. Prime opportunity now inside a Trojan territory. Yeah, love what I'm seeing from Butler, fighting for those extra yards. Don't love what I'm seeing from the clock if I'm McCallum. They go back to Butler again. They've been consistent with that. Uh-huh, that's zero yards. Clock is ticking. We're down 29, 28, no timeouts. Are we spiking here? Are we moving fast? What's going on? Hail Mary. Uh, you, got, you got four plays left if you want. Shotgun, Dunham drops back, good protection, deep. Mark Sanchez, Grayson Lake. Number two, Grayson Lake with a good Third and 12 for the Knights. 10 seconds left, gotta go for the end zone.
Junior Lieutenant Avery Taylor. Senior Lieutenant Aaron Williams. Yeah, that's what I, I was. I meant, yeah. To continue your halftime entertainment, please welcome Anderson's oldest and proudest tradition, the Pride of Northwest Austin, your 2023 Trojan Marching Band. Drum majors for the Trojan Band are Laura Margo and Sophia Sierra. The band president is Zoe Hills, and the band vice president is Karis Freer. The Trojan Band Marchers of the Week are Lila Thompson, Jefferson Blaha, Jay Wynn, and Audra Hall. The Anderson Band and Bells would like to wish the McCallum Band and performers good luck this marching season. Tonight, the Trojan Band will perform a portion of their 2023 production entitled, Are You the One? Ladies and gentlemen, the Trojan Band.
ladies and gentlemen, the Anderson Trojan Band. The dance guard directors are Chad Wood and Kinsey Hewitt. Front ensemble instructor is Clayton Strout and Ashley Reidenauer. Directors of the Anderson Band are Cheryl Lee, Frank Deadly, and Jeff Cleveland. The Trojan Band would like to thank Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the 2023-2024 McCallum High School Band. Under the field direction of drum majors Sophia Hamlet, Dee Stamper, and Elena Lindsay. The officers of the Mac Band are President Frank Montesinos, Vice President Thomas Ross, Secretary Grace Valdez, and the reporter historian is Max Davis. Our freshman of the week, is by heart. Our band member of the week is Elliot Taylor. And our section of the week are the Malifones. The McCallum Band is one of the premier 5A bands in the state of Texas. They have appeared in the last three state 5A marching contests, placing sixth in finals at their last appearance. This past July, the band was named a finalist in TMEA Honor Band competition, marking the fourth time in school history that the Mac Band has attained this status. McCallum has the distinction of being the only urban 5A school in the state of Texas to be named an Honor Band finalist. Tonight, we present our 2023 contest show, Star Surfers. Featured soloists are Ben Martinez, flute, and B. Sapper, clarinet. And our featured sax quartet includes Frank Montesinos, Aubrey Mitchell, Elliot Taylor, and William Viner. Now, please welcome the McCallum High School Band.
McCallum Blue Brigade. The Blue Brigade officers are Co-Captain Kylie Reed, Co-Captain Sophie Lee-Ung-Lu, Senior Lieutenant Mel McGinnis, Junior Lieutenant Gabby Alvarado, Smith Bowles, and Catherine Paikola. This evening, the Blue Brigade performs a traditional kick routine to Hey Baby.
Hello and welcome back to House Park. KVU's Friday football fever on Thursday. First ever broadcast stream on KVU Plus and the KVU YouTube page. You're looking at the Anderson Trojans' new running tunnel. Now, Jeff, there's a story, a very cool story yeah. about this pretty cool running tunnel. Pretty cool, brand new running tunnel. I hope you can see the flashing lights in the eyes right there. A bunch of cool stuff going on with that one. We actually chatted with head coach uh, Donald Hatcher via Zoom and it was hands-free. He was safe. When he was on the road on Tuesday to go and get that brand new tunnel from Dallas, this thing is uh, new and it looks like it's bringing good luck to the Trojans. They lead this thing by five touchdowns at the break, 35 to zero. 35 to nothing, Anderson over McCallum in the 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl. He's mm -hmm. Jeff Jones. I'm Tyler Feldman. Corey Moe's with us as well on this broadcast, making sure you have all the video and can see the game at home. Such an integral part of this broadcast. Johan also back at the station, making sure this Ooh. is streaming live on KVU Plus Everybody's getting a shout and out. YouTube. Like and then these guys behind us in the press box, they're wonderful. They've been very kind to us. We've invaded their space. But again, Anderson 35, McCallum nothing. Anderson leading the Taco Shack Bowl Series 11 to 10. Looks like it will likely be 12 to 10. They've won three of the last four. Looks like it will be four of the last five. Mm -hmm. A dominant first half for the Trojans, scoring on five of their six offensive drives. Yeah, so the offense clearly clicking. It's small, that wide out, who's going to be a Texas baseball player in the future, showing that he is uh, more than just a baseball player. He is an all-around athlete, as Tyler has told us early in the broadcast. Ed's dad believes that basketball was really his best sport, but he's a Power 5 baseball player and a football player who has scored three touchdowns in the first half of his first junior game. So he's showing out on offense. We've seen two quarterbacks play pretty well for the Trojans on offense. And then on defense, on the other side of the ball, Jack Middleton, number 91. If you're joining us right now, <laughs> he is making Beast. things work. Yeah, I want to go ahead and show the players coming out of that brand new tunnel right there. Tyler, they look, uh, look energized, look ready to go. I think the Look Trojans like they're might, up 35 nothing. They might keep their foot on the gas. Jeff, but before we go and dive deeper into this ball game, mm -hmm. we've got these special green ribbons over our right heart here. We only have one heart, but it's on the right side pretty much. And it's a special ribbon that McCallum actually gave us tonight, some of the students down in the student section, yeah. raising awareness mm -hmm. for mental health, which is so important. Yeah, two members of the band came up to us and they were holding these ribbons. I said, hey, what's the story behind the ribbons? You know, I don't know that they were going to give them to us, but I, I wanted to know more. When we as journalists see something interesting, we want to know the story. And they said they wanted to show support to the Anderson students, the Anderson community, who of course lost one of their uh, students about a week and a half or two weeks ago, uh, they wanted to show support for mental health. So it just shows that this occasion, this first game of the season, it's a fierce rivalry. These teams are going to battle each other on the field, but uh, in the stands before and after the game, these, these people represent AISD. They represent our community and the kids, the future leaders in our communities, uh, want to do what's right. Really great to see as we take a look down at the field now. Again, 35 to nothing. Communities coming together to raise awareness for mental health. Communities coming together for a football game that involves the Taco Shack. Just a special night here in the wonderful city of Austin. A great way to kick off the high school football season here in Texas. Again, KVU's Friday football fever on Thursday. The debut streaming on YouTube and KVU Plus. We appreciate you joining us and feel free to comment on the YouTube page if you want to interact with us here up in the broadcast booth on the home side, the McCallum side of this football field. 35 to nothing, Anderson. Jeff, you talked about it a little bit before we got into halftime, but if you're McCallum, if you're head coach Tom Gammerdinger, you just want to find ways to score. Yeah, yeah, I think right now what you have to do is try to get your kids, your athletes, not to look at the scoreboard. 35-0, that can be intimidating, that can seem overwhelming. So don't think about that. Just think about this drive. Can we put points on the board on this drive? Can we do it two drives in a row? That's what I would talk to him about is two drive chunks, offense scoring back-to-back -back drives, defense gets stops in back-to-back -back drives. We'll reassess after that. Short kickoff to start the second half. Fair catch made around the 25, and we are underway here in the third quarter. Jeff Jones, Corey Mose, Tyler Feldman. Gave you Friday football fever on Thursday. Having a blast so far, so is... Ed Small. We've talked about him enough, but when you have no touchdowns in your first Taco Shack game as a freshman, two as a sophomore, 
three now as a junior. Maybe he gets At four. At least three. But yeah. the trajectory, Jeff, <laughs> is up. So next year it's got to be four or more, right? I think you just called it eight touchdowns for Ed Small in next year's Taco Shack Bowl. Going to be one of the all-time performances, huh? Sounds like an Athlete of the Week <laughs> opportunity for Ed Small. Getty actually won that award last year. Dunham on first and ten. Jesus Antonio Soto there to make the stop in the backfield. Again, one of those key defensive players, and he showed why a couple times in the first half and starts the second half the right way for that Anderson defense. That Knights O-line had seven players lined up there and let two Anderson defenders make a play in the backfield. That can't happen. That's not how you want to start this half. Good news is it's second down. It's time to get back on the right track. Seven players lined up on the offensive line again. Second and 11 from the 24. Dunham takes a snap from the shotgun. Fumble in the backfield. And look who's there. It is quickly recovered. I actually thought Middleton had it. Looked like it to me, but Did no. Did it slip under his arms? Butler drops on it. Was that Butler? Anyway, McCallum yeah, somehow <laughs> recovers the fumble. And we saw the mistakes. That's not what you want to see if you're the Knights. Yeah, and now it's, you know, third and 15. This isn't their game right here. Their game is to get those five-yard chunks on the ground. Now they have to go through the air. This is not how you want it to have to start. Dunham looks left, looks right, rolls right, and incomplete. Intended for Grayson Lake. Mark Sanchez, excuse me. Intended for Mark Sanchez. Fourth and 15 from the 20. And now the Knights will have to punt another drive. Another drive with no points. 35 to nothing Trojans. Yeah, yeah, this is not how you wanted to start the half. Uh, you have to dial up those safe plays next time and do what you can to find some momentum and keep these players uh, into it, you know, because your job right now as a coaching staff is to do everything you can to keep them into the next play, not the next quarter. Don't look at the scoreboard. Don't think big picture right now. Just think small, step-by-step, play-by-play. And that's much easier to do when you're seeing success than when you're fumbling snaps, going backwards. Play-by-play play, down on the field. Play-by-play play up here in the broadcast booth. Jeff, it was 100-plus degrees at the time of kickoff. The sun is now set, and things have really cooled off. It's now 96 degrees outside. Yeah, and as strange as this sounds, 96 degrees is not what McCallum wanted. They wanted it to stay hot in here. <laughs> yeah. Here's an advantage that some people don't think about. The home sideline here at House Park is shaded. So when the games kick off, the McCallum sideline was in the shade. It was 10 degrees cooler on their side. Oh, I didn't like the speed of that. One of those is getting blocked. Uh, it's 10 degrees cooler on the McCallum sideline than it is on the Anderson sideline. So they wanted it to stay hot as long as possible. Jet Joseph, first time saying his name today, Jeff. You talked about him earlier, the special nature of him wearing that number 20. Yeah, honoring his family. His dad wore number 20, his grandfather wore number 20, and Jet is continuing the family legacy. He's continuing it because Ben Hatcher, the coach's son, uh, offered that number up. Ben was supposed to wear number 20 this season like his dad did, but he said, you know what, Jet is the upperclassman. Let Jet continue this family legacy this year. I'll take it over in the future. That's the sign of a great teammate, an awesome teammate, and the sign of a Sophomore who doesn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> all of those things, all of those things. Anderson called for a 10-yard holding penalty on the punt return, so we'll move back a little bit. 10-42 here. Early on in the third quarter, Anderson leading 35 to nothing if you're just joining us. Trojans won this game 49-3 a season ago. They've won 11 of the first 21 meetings, lead the series 11-10. They've won three of the last four, trying to make it four of five. And unless something changes quickly with this McCallum Knights football team, it'll be four of five. 10-42, first and 10 from the 39. That's Gerlich finding Zayden Sharp. Sharp's got those luscious locks flowing out of the helmet, Jeff. Hmm. Luscious locks, got to love them. You know, I was talking to a Lake Travis linebacker earlier this offseason. He said he thinks he gets his power from his hair. I want to hear from Zayden. Tell me the story about the locks, man. When did they start? What do they give you? You know, kids can be attached to their hair now as their hair is attached to them. 
Dr. Jones joining us also on the broadcast. Garlic rolls left, finds small, small, stiff arm with the left arm, and he gains another five, six yards. Yeah, we see him do it short, intermediate, deep, all levels of the defense. He can run routes there, get open there, and make plays there. It's another example. A little five-yard game right there. You know, it doesn't look like a lot, but you string a few of those together, and they turn into a nice drive. They turn into a drive where the, the clock ticks away if he stays in bounds there. So this is all good news for the Trojans. Third down and six from the 43. 10.31 left in the third quarter. Gerlich takes a snap. Hands it off to Hatcher. Look at the speed around the outside. Gets a block there from Tristan Waddle. And Hatcher breaks three. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Ben Hatcher hatches up another touchdown. Oh, the did you see the celebration? <laughs> did you see the celebration? <laughs> Down goes Hatcher. Down goes Hatcher. Ed Small with another victory. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You know? Charlie Despin's a senior right tackle just holding his arms up. You can't see it on the screen, but it was just like, yes, <laughs> Ben Hatcher, the man who doesn't like to get in trouble, causes some trouble for the Knights' defense. Another touchdown for the Trojans. He's a guy who does things the right way, and you do things the right way on and off the field. Of course, it's going to pay off for you, and it's paying off for him big this game. Trojan student section saying this is what we expected. Yeah, been there, done that. Been there, done that. They did it last year, so a lot of the same students in that section again this year. Getting pretty comfortable. And sometimes you win some, you lose some, but the Trojans back-to-back -back years now up 42 to nothing. Not looking back, it seems like. No, I don't think that this one's going to get swayed in any uh, surprising direction from here on out. Having said that, Go ahead and watch the rest of this with us, right? Something cool could happen. And, hey, I know what head coach Donald Hatcher is enjoying after this game over at the Taco Shack, the Burn It Road Burrito. Yeah. He says that's the go-to yeah. order. Maybe serve up a couple of those for the head coach <laughs> for the Trojans. i got to find out what's on the Burn It Road Burrito. Somebody listening right now knows it. Comment down below, I guess, let me know, because I have no clue what a Burnet Road Burrito is. Anderson Trojans Football Booster Club probably saying right now, yeah, we've got to cough up some Burnet Road Burritos for the head coach. 42 to nothing, 10-18 left to play here in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, KVU Plus or YouTube, a couple options. That's what we like to do for you all here at KVU. Okay. Mark, right, there Mark we go. Sanchez says, yeah. let me do a little something with this. Yeah, and he might be the best athlete on the team. He's playing both ways. Coach Gammerdinger said to us explicitly, he said, this guy's going to play a lot. Whether we're winning or losing, when it's competitive, I need my best guys on the field. And Mark Sanchez is one of those best guys on offense and on defense. They haven't been returning a lot of kicks since they fumbled that one in the first quarter. I like that when the ball came to their guy, he didn't think twice. He said, let's go. You know, I'm still confident. We might not be in this thing to win this, but we're in this to get better, and this is how we're going to do it. Coach Jones, we got to get you down on the field with the headset on. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that. to see that. You'd love to see that? Okay. Butler, another five yards. Jesus Antonio Soto there with the stop for the Trojans. And I saw Ashby Reeves, senior offensive lineman, come around and deliver a block. It turned what could have been a three- or four-yard loss into a three- or four-yard gain. So definitely want to give a shout-out to the old lineman for doing his job and doing it well. And it looks like Butler comes to the sideline either cramping up or injured. Second down and seven from the 35. Dunham, Andrews, Middleton. Hammering Andrews down in the backfield. Middleton, a guy who we've called many, many times, and uh, he continues to do what we've seen all night. And if you look at, there's Butler on the bench. It looks like a cramp, Jeff. Yeah, looks like a... he's just cramped up with that heat. I know I said it dropped down 10 degrees, but it's still 
really hot out there. Yeah, stretching him out, and it looks like maybe he's maybe he's getting up and gonna then try to give it a go. But you know, once those cramps start, it's so hard to get rid of them. So just hope the best for the young man. He's been very productive for uh, the Knights today. Looks to be okay there right now. Maybe a little discomfort. We'll see what happens. Luke Dunham on yes. 39 from the 33. Yeah. We've got we've got flags. We've got movement. Jeff, you called you to that. Yeah. Saw that from a mile away. Yeah, yeah, and that's the second time we've seen that. The first time it went uncalled. It was on that fourth down uh, attempt that was not converted. It was the pass play that came towards the boundary right towards us at the end of the second quarter. And so we've seen the, the running back start leaning forward, and if you're leaning at the wrong time, it's wrong. Gamer Gabriel saying, McCallum, go on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of Knights fans hold that same sentiment. Third down and 14 from the 28, 830 left. Down 35 to nothing here in the third quarter. Dunham no. drops back, looks up, and finds his man. Jorge Aldape, the junior, All right. saying, yeah, that's right. That's how we do. Little flanker slot receiver there. For the Knights, first time saying his name tonight. Mm-hmm. Big first down for the Knights, Jeff. Yeah, huge. I, I didn't know that they were going to convert that one when I saw how happy the feet of the quarterback were at the snap. Uh, he, he looked uncomfortable in the pocket, but he found something and made it work. It's really all it's about, you know, just making it work for a few plays in a row. You get your confidence, you calm down, and things change. Andrews gets the handoff, bounces up for a couple. Less than eight to play here in the third quarter. Second down and seven from the 48 for the Knights. See if they can get points on the board, Jeff. I know you've been reiterating that, but again, if you're McCallum, first week of the season, first game of the season, mm -hmm. dealing with all those injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tons of injuries. And I mean, honestly, these guys knew coming in that they were going to be the underdogs. McCallum has about 38 players on the roster. Uh, Anderson has nearly twice as many. So they knew that they were going to be the underdogs in this one. We see the score is lopsided. Right now they're trying to find something positive to hold on to. Something that they can show their kids in film tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and uh, say this is how we do it. Gage Webb making the stop for the Trojans on that last play. It's third down and seven now from the 48 for the Knights. Luke Dunham from the shotgun. Quick pass, right side. Sanchez, tough to bring down, finally put to the ground by Liam McMillian, short of the first down marker. Familiar place on the field, familiar down in distance, fourth and medium on the right side of the 50. They've gone for it twice before. It has not paid off twice before. It's the third time a charm. And we've seen this before. We've seen this before from the Knights in this territory. Is this the time they convert on fourth down? Fourth and four from the 49. Six to play in the third. And we've got movement. Yeah. We've got some uh, frustration up here in the box, obviously. Those pre-snap penalties are a killer. You They've know? been killing the Knights all game. Yeah. You can hear that frustration up here from the coaches. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and honestly, I'm, they're right. You know, they are right. Like, this is a, a critical moment, as we said, to grab something good that you guys can hang on to and take with them towards the district part of the season, the part that really matters. Like, you have to figure it out right now. You need something to hang your hat on, and it could be a fourth down conversion that is that. Now, fourth and nine on the wrong side of the 50, this isn't a situation where you go for it. you got to punt it away. Thurston Roberts, low snap, able to get it away. Boots it. What a punt. You want to talk about something to hang your hat on. Deep. That's the deepest Anderson's been all game, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Inside I mean, the five. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot to hang your head on. Yeah. I'm saying that has to be one. Nice little roll. Yeah. Nice little roll. Uh, the roll... After the punt was better than the roll I saw before the punt. Yeah. 
second bad snap that we've seen tonight. Special teams mistakes are a killer, and I'm shocked that that wasn't the second huge special teams mistake that we've seen the Knights make. Uh, the snap didn't reach the punter before it hit the ground. You can't, you can't come up short like that. Had Anderson been putting any kind of rush on there, who knows what happened. And at best, it's a block punt. At worst, it's a scoop and score situation. There might be some good to take away, but uh, they were good. Hey, on the bright side for McCallum, you're going to very clearly see what you need to work on when you watch the film after this game. Yep. It will be very clear, and I think that will help head coach Thomas Gammendinger and the rest of his coaching staff really come up with a game plan to help elevate from what we've seen tonight. Again, still week one, dealing with all those injuries, so they've had to um, they've had to deal with quite a bit. Yeah. And we've seen that tonight, but I think the reality is, Jeff. Anderson has shown that, injury or not, they're a pretty good football team. We've yeah, seen that. Yeah, tonight, bigger, stronger, faster. Bigger in uh, height and weight. Oh, that's facing that's for sure, right? Zayden Sharp. Bigger height and weight and bigger in roster size. Uh, both of those things are paying off. Maybe he didn't get his hand on the face mask. Maybe it was inside the horse collar on the front side, which uh, is not a penalty. <laughs> Zayden Sharp with the luscious locks, the blonde locks. Good yardage there. Eight yards. Good blocking up front from that Trojans offensive line. Second down and two from the 13. Max Gerlich. From the shotgun, quick pass to Ed Small. Ed Small, nowhere to run. Miles Chilton, right on the line, met Ed Small, one of his best plays of the night. Yeah, time to give another shout-out to Tony Andrews. Guys, we are late in this game. The Knights are down by seven touchdowns, and we have people sprinting to help their teammates make tackles. Tyler, you spoke earlier about um, how it'll be clear and obvious what the Knights need to work on. As this game gets later and later, it's going to be clear and obvious also who is still in the fight, who still wants to bring it. Tony Andrews, you can play on my team. That's quite the compliment. Garlic gets it to Wadalik. Taken down again, and then, hey, the McCallum coaches room right next to us, they're, they're cheering. Yeah, yeah, the words are very different. The tone is very different. Karan Lewis held on tight there. He could have let go. It would have been the easy thing to do to slide over that tackle. He did the hard thing. He still wants to play and fight in this game. Another guy who can play on my team. Jeff, just... I, I'm an every bolst guy. Bolstering the roster ahead of Gabe Hughes fantasy football draft <laughs> Sunday night. Garlic <laughs> drops back. Ed Small makes the catch around the 30-yard line. That's a first down for the Trojans. I want to point out how tough it is for a receiver freshly out of his break to hit the ground quickly and get both arms under a ball. That's tough to do. Ed Small made it look easy. It's a routine-looking play that is not routine at all. Right when he whips his head around, he thinks the ball is going to hit him about waist or above. It was at the ground. He had to get to the ground quickly. Did. I'll draft Ed Small on my fantasy football roster. I'll bol bolster mine, Jeff. We need to talk about the draft order first because uh, I'm not just going to give that one up. <laughs> Williams. Dayton Williams. That dude is tough to bring down. Mm -hmm. Gets to near the 40-yard line. Here comes that Trojans offense. Positive yardage. Play after play. Gerlich looks impressive. It looks like Donald Hatcher has a couple of pretty good quarterbacks on his team this year. Yeah, yeah. And that's a position that it's good to have a, a good backup, you yeah. know? Second and one from the 39, Gurley. Quick pass to Ed Small. Over the middle. Brought down by Karan Lewis. Lewis right there on Small, but Small with enough separation to make another grab. Chains are moving, so are the Trojans. 2.44 left in the third quarter. Anderson up 42 to nothing here on KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. First and ten from the 46. Gerlich looks to hand it off. Manal's looking for Hatcher. A little play fake. It worked. Had space. Just overthrows. Yeah, and the reason he overthrew is because he was rushed. The reason he was rushed is because Tony Andrews, the guy who's on my team again, undersized but full of heart, he did what I call pull the chain. That's what we were taught as linebackers. When that quarterback escapes the pocket, he's buying time, buying time. If he gets farther outside than your starting position, you pull the chain, meaning you sprint right at his outside shoulder, force him to make a decision. Are you going to tuck it and get hit, 
or are you going to throw an inaccurate ball? Choice is yours. Second and ten from the 46 for Anderson Gerlich. Oh, boy. Look at that little move. Yeah, I've been that linebacker before, and that is not a fun position to be in. Uh, you know, it's tough. You catch those guys in space, and you think you have an angle, and they just all of a sudden hit the brakes, and, you know, it's hard for you to eliminate that good angle that, uh, that they just created. Third and five for the 49, Gerlich. Over to Hatcher. Hatcher makes the grab, crosses the chains, and goes for more. Down to the 30-yard line. Another first down for the Trojans. You know, all game long, we have seen the Trojan wide receivers make plays, but they haven't really been wide open like that. Clearly a bust on that play. Uh, somebody got their eyes caught in the backfield, maybe thinking about the prior play, thinking about the run that we saw, and uh, instead of actually playing their assignments and covering the receiver. Dominic Mays in the backfield now, running back, and we've got whistles and a flag. Jeff, got score updates across the league here. What do we got, Texas High School football? You know, we have a bunch of local teams in action right now. A couple of comebacks that could happen late in close games. Hendrickson, the Hawks are down against Delton right now, 35-27 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. The Hawks are at home, though. Fun things happen early in the season at home, so a comeback could be in store there. Bowie leads Vista Ridge 14-7, winding the third down there. And LBJ and Maynard, we have a halftime score there, so they're about to start the third quarter up. The Mustangs lead 27-20 over the Jags. That has been your Texas High School football score update brought to you by Jeff Jones. First and 15 from the 36, Gurley. Joni can use the feet and wasn't afraid to bounce off that tackle there on the far sideline. Tackle made by John Scott Mabry. I like what he did. We talked about pulling the chain. He saw that he, uh, the quarterback was outrunning his teammate, so he came up to help him out. What I like, though, is if you see a quarterback out there inbounds, you got to make sure that quarterback knows that you're there. You got to touch him a little bit. I'm not talking about anything dirty, but just make sure he knows you're there and he feels your presence. I think he let the quarterback get off a little easy there. Three names, one tackle for Mabry. John Scott Mabry. Second and 13 from the 34. Minute left in the third. Gurley, quick pass. Far side, Zayden Sharp. Positive yardage. The clock continues to tick. Anderson up 42 to nothing if you're just joining us on KVU Plus or the KVU YouTube page. If you're just joining us, what you've missed about three quarters of football as well as the halftime performances from the Anderson and McCallum marching bands. And as we've said, you know, it's really been uh, Ed Small standing out on the Trojans' offense. And in the first half, Jack Middleton, a converted offensive tackle who now plays defensive end, was living in the McCallum backfield. Uh, we did see McCallum Knights defensive end Ed Bamba showing up in the backfield as well. So those three players have really popped to me. Uh, I like what I've seen from Tony Andrews as far as his effort goes on the McCallum defense. He's a senior team leader, and I, I see why. 13 seconds left here. Herb informing us that it's been a timeout by Anderson. If there's one thing I know I can trust Herb to tell us, it's the timeout situation. Mm. And that's been one of the big comforts on this broadcast, is knowing that we have him having our back, Jeff. You know, comfort, a safety net, a safety trusted net. ally. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just not enough phrases out there to describe what he's been for us. He's been the perfect uh, mint oregano perfect parsley topping to our i believe that's herb right ah, soft h he's a he's a hard soft h right age, got it. Okay. he's more of a herb okay get it do you get hear it. me i herb you <laughs> i'll let you have that one jeff <laughs> oh. what time is it hey just letting you know sports at 10 about 10 20 on cave you still gonna happen still gonna happen don't you worry about that. Jeff will make it happen. Gerlich drops back on third down and eight. Steps up. Bamba. Oh. Finds his guy. Is that Wadalik out there? It is Wadalik. Looked like Gerlich had room to run and just get across the marker. I think so. I think so. 
And I'm trying to see, did he let that ball go when he was in front of the line of scrimmage? What, what happened here? I did see Bamba closing in quickly. I thought he was going to make it there just before the ball left the quarterback's hands. He did not. Second time this game that's happened. Uh, the first touchdown. Five-yard penalty. He was past the line of scrimmage. There we go. There we go. The first touchdown we saw, um, Bamba was just maybe a split second away from either forcing a fumble or getting a huge sack, but instead the quarterback got the ball off just in time, and it went for a long and small touchdown. Well, there's six seconds left here in the third quarter. 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl, 51st ever meeting between these two heated rivalries mm -hmm. here in the Austin area, McCallum and Anderson. Trojans up 42 to nothing. It's been all Trojans in this ball game. Gerlich fakes the handoff to Hatcher. Now looks deep across the middle to Sharp. Had him, but that ball falls just short on third down and 13. He had good read, pretty good toss. He couldn't really stop and get his feet into it because, again, Bamba was chasing him. Uh, Bamba's popping. And this is the time where I'm really, if I'm on the McCallum sideline, this is the time where I'm really looking for people to separate themselves. They're not going to win this game. But there's still something to play for, and I want to see the kids who understand that. Because if they're able to play hard when they're down six touchdowns, I know they're going to play hard when they're up or when they're in it. And so Bamba's one of those guys who uh, he's proven why he's a team leader. End of the third quarter here at it. Historic House Park. Sun has, as you can see, very much set. Sub 100 degree temperatures now. <laughs> Upper 90s, though. Anderson leading 42 to nothing. You are streaming live. KU's Friday football fever on Thursday. Jeff Jones, Tyler Feldman, Corey Bowes with us. Johan Castro making sure. You can watch us and hear us back home at the studio. We appreciate it, everyone who's tuned in tonight. Still have one more quarter to play. We'll see if Anderson can make it four out of the last five Taco Shack Bulls. They lead the all-time series 29 to 21, looking to make it 30 and 21. If there's one thing we've seen from McCallum, the fans have brought the noise. The band has brought the rhythm. And here we go to start the fourth quarter. It's McCallum football. Dunham. Hands it off to Sanchez. Sanchez. Brought down by Jet Joseph. Double J. Second double J, I know. Excellent initials. Excellent tackle. Says Jeff Jones. Jeff yeah. Jones standing to my left with a smile. You know, the McCallum run game, when it's been right, it's been very right, and it's typically been up the middle. I, I gave a shout-out to the center and the two guards earlier. Uh, we've seen a few plays go off tackle and, and a few unblocked defenders. That's not what you want. Ball on the 32-yard line, second and 10. Dunham back to Sanchez. Cuts right. He's taken down by Liam McMillian, the sophomore for the Trojans. I think that might have been Drew Andrews. I want to give him a shout out because he is the twin brother of uh, Tony Andrews on the other side. And so we heard that both of those guys, a little undersized, but they play hard and they play through the whistle. We saw right there that he did not want to go down. Um, just a very impressive run. The identical twins. Hard to tell the difference. Hence the identical. Herb's laughing at us. Not sure if you can pick up his laugh. It's a good one. There's Andrews. Look right up the gut. Look at he that. Again is McMillian. McMillian all over the field right now for the white, blue, and gold. And again, we pointed out a moment ago, the uh, positive yardage runs from McCallum come right up the middle. The running backs at least hit the line of scrimmage up the middle. Then you can bounce right, left, wherever you see the holes. That's your job as a running back. But the job of the offensive lineman to create those holes, those three guys in the center have been doing it really well. Again, that's Cal Geisler, Teron Hall, and A.J. Wolf. Seems like they're doing their job in the middle. First down and 10 for the 46. 10.41 left to play here in the ball game. Anderson up 42 to nothing. Hand off to Sanchez. Sanchez with room, with speed. Mm -hmm. Taken down at around the 45-yard line in Trojan territory. 
by Grayson Lake. This is the drive, Tyler. This is the drive that you lead film with. You let them know this is us at our best. Find a way to score on this drive. If it's going for it on fourth, if it's pulling out your trick plays, whatever it is, find a way to score on this drive so you can hang your hat on this, not on the punt that bounced a few yards. This is what you look at going forward. Dunham hands it back to Sanchez. Sanchez with another four or five yards. They're moving the football, Jeff, and the big question, the big key for this McCallum offense right now, mistake free. Yeah, mistake free. The plays are going forward, not a lot of uh, penetration making it through the line of scrimmage since that play maybe six or seven plays ago. I just like what I'm seeing. This is a, a run first offense, and I like that they're not focused on the scoreboard. They say we're going to win this drive, treat it like it's 0 0. Let's go down here and take the lead. Dunham, not sure what he's doing with the football, and he gets taken down by a handful of Trojans. Gage Webb, the first one back there to kind of make him cut in. River Anderson back there as well, getting to see some of these reserve guys now for the Trojans. Nine minutes and counting in this ball game. It's pretty much been Anderson right from the get-go. Some early mistakes by the Knights, leading to a few touchdowns for the Trojans in that first quarter. Anderson never looked back. Up 42 to nothing now. The defense has been stout, and McCallum just trying to find the end zone or just some points. Anything positive late in this ball game. Toss left to Andrews. Cuts left, cuts right. Across the 40, and there's a flag after the play. And Andrews is sudden. I like that burst he has, man. And I tell you what else I like, Ashby Reeves, another offensive lineman who I've called out before. I saw him having to get up off, off of somebody, and he was on top. So give him a pancake, Coach, when you're reviewing this film. Ashby Reeves looked like he did something well on that play. Andrews saying, with that burst of speed, Jeff, we're not getting shut out by our rivals. <laughs> I don't care what it takes. So important to get that goose egg off of there something to build on that's what they're working towards right now and you know if they can limit the penalties limit the mistakes i think that's what they'll get on this drive dating back to 2004 no team has been shut out in the taco shack bowl so anderson and mccallum could make some history tonight if the knights fail to find the end zone or kick a ball through the uprights yeah, so no shutouts, and obviously the fewest amount of points came last year when McCallum only scored three. We're hoping that they can uh, get it in gear. Second and 22 from the 47. There's Andrews. Gets a block, but then gets taken down quickly. River Anderson, Jet Joseph, Mark Heatley, all in there with the stop for the Trojans. River Anderson. That name just flows. <laughs> Just like we can't end this broadcast soon enough. No, I'm, nah, just, I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm We're having it. a blast I'm up here. It. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. That's sarcasm for all of you listening at home. Third and 21 from the 48. Dunham in the shotgun. He's got Andrews back there. Looks left. Yeah, steps hole. up. And then keeps it himself. Speed. He's got speed. speed. He's got room. Down the near sideline. Pushed out of bounds around the 20-yard line. And there's a flag. Here we go. Possibly a late hit. That puts him even closer. Jeff, Knights are smelling some points here. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to call a late hit or if they're going to call a horse collar on that. But there was some uh, some activity that was not legal on the sideline right there. And it happened on the McCallum sideline. So you know the cheerleaders, the ball boys, the coaches, the players, the fans, everybody was letting the refs know. Throw that flag. Don't keep it in the pocket. Well, that'll certainly help. As we zoom out and show you a better grasp of the field. Look at that. You can see the parking garage blocking the view of the city. But the city's right behind. You can see some of the buildings there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, a yeah. little pan action. Wow. This Look is at Moe's. High see quality Moe's. That, That's how you do it. First and 10 from the 11. Knights trying to find the end zone. Luke Dunham, junior quarterback, played quarterback last year. Hands it to Mark Sanchez. Oh, 
Is that Gage Webb? Who is that? Brick wall. Yeah, Gage Webb. Gage Webb. Web. We've seen him all night. He's Short tackler. Yeah. Seven minutes left. McCallum trying to find the end zone for the first time tonight. Second and seven from the eight-yard line. Fourth quarter, House Park. Dunham pitches left to Andrews. Cuts out, cuts in, gets one or two yards, maybe three. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I believe uh, the offensive coaches for McCallum are thinking about two plays. Is this, is this time for us to try our best to find the end zone, or is this time to get the goose egg off the, off the scoreboard? That's a Coach Gammerdinger decision right now, but you know that question is being asked, and that's going to determine what happens on third down. Uh, his answer. Third down and five. You can hear the McCallum fan section, the band, the student section. Making some noise. Six-yard line, 6.13 to go in the game. 42 to nothing, Anderson. Dunham takes the snap, hands it off to Andrews. Cuts out, but gets taken oh. down. Nice tackle there by number 24, Zach Poe, the junior. And I don't believe his knee hit on the first time, so great job of Zach Poe by holding on, because had he let go, I think that could have been a sneaky touchdown and maybe a play of the week nominee uh, tomorrow on Friday Football Fever. Poe reading that play beautifully, mm -hmm. like a raven from the secondary. Yes, yes. To make that tackle. Play was not Poe at all. It's very good. For all you avid Edgar Allan Poe readers at home. Fourth and five from the six. Jeff, looks like they're going for it. Mm -hmm. Would you kick the field goal and get the points? You know, with this decision, I think you have to know your team. And so what would build them up most? Because that's a question right now. This is all about uh, confidence, courage going forward. And so is it knowing, hey, our backs were against the wall. We knew we were going to fall in this game. We found a way to get five yards when we needed on fourth down. Would that build them up more, or is it not seeing the goose egg on the board? Because the, the risk is obvious. If they go for it right here, what could happen is what we've seen happen to them on other fourth downs early in this game. They come up short. So there's clear risk, and I can't answer that question because I don't know this team. I don't know what would put them in a better position going forward. Well, we could knock on the McCallum coaches' room to our left. Or we could wait and see. McCallum calls the timeout. Man, I think I take, well, there's Dunham. It looks like he's going back out onto the field, has his helmet already strapped on. There we go. They're going for six. I love it. I love it. And at this point, what's really there to lose? There's a lot to gain here, you're right. And what is there to lose? You know, having a zero on the scoreboard or having three on the scoreboard feels similar. But getting this could be the thing that, that these guys talk about in school tomorrow. Fourth and five from the six, 525 left of the game. McCallum going for the end zone. First Two best touchdown. players are on the right. There's Dunham, fakes the pass. Lob it to up, get lob taken it up. down. Ferocious defense yeah. from the Trojans. Close, but no points for McCallum. Gage Webb, Mark Heatley, some of the guys in there on that stop. I do like the call, though. I like the call. I think there was a lot to gain there. Uh, I like that they, they gave their quarterback options. They rolled him towards their sideline. It wasn't much shorter of a field on the, on the right than the left. They rolled him towards the sideline. They rolled him towards his two best players. Mark Sanchez and Drew Andrews were both lined up on the right, running short routes. So you had options. You going to Sanchez, you going to Andrews, or you tucking it. What's rough for the Knights is that the Trojans quickly took away any options by penetrating the backfield. 5.18 left in this game. Anderson from its own six. Hands it off to Williams. Just making that clock tick. This game all but over. Anderson will be the winner of the 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl to take a 12 to 10 lead in this rivalry series. Obviously, it dates back much further than that. 51st meeting between these two teams. Anderson, with the win, would get their 30th win all time.
Martin gets McCallum. Pass there, intended for Sharp. Incomplete, Gerlich. Still navigating the offense. We saw Brady Gephardt start the game, the senior, number 12 for the Trojans. They went up big, three plus scores, Gerlich time. Head coach Donald Hatcher with options. Third and 10 for the six, 4.30 left in the game. Another handoff. Dominic Mays. Ed Bamba in the backfield again. Block keeps running. We've got some fans trickling out of the stands. Trying to beat that city traffic back home, Jeff, on a Thursday night, a school night. School night, We've yeah. We've got school in the morning, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Better see you at home room. <laughs> the second period? Homeroom was second period when I was in school. That doesn't make much sense at all. You know, in Pittsburgh, where I'm from, homeroom was the first period. See, I feel like that makes more sense. Homeroom. Yeah. But I guess some people had athletics first period, so maybe it makes sense. Maybe it makes sense. We've got a timeout, Herb's telling us. I've met a lot of people in my life, Jeff. No one knows timeouts better than, than Herb. He's keeping track of them. It's almost like he's a mystical character at this point of the broadcast. Wow. Now, mystical characters, are we talking unicorns, dragons, yeah. herb? Okay, got it. Got oh, it. Same category. Yep. Yep. What's the one called that's like half man, half horse? Is that a Pegasus? No, that's something else. Uh, Minotaur. Ma Minotaur. Minotaur. There we go. Our guy, Barney, he's on it. Purple Teach dinosaurs. Te are they mythical? Te teaches over at McCallum. <laughs> Dinosaurs are extinct, Jeff. Barney is not. Because ah. he's sitting right to our right. Love that. Love that. To our knowledge. Just like Beyonce, Barney is a survivor. <laughs> We've got 342 left in this ball game. I wonder if Beyonce's in the stands. Probably Could be. not. Could be. Mark Sanchez lets it trickle around the 50. Picks it up, and we've got whistles. Yeah, I heard that early whistle as well. I couldn't tell if that came from the stands or if that was just a little, a little early. Herb would never. I did not mean to insinuate, Herb, that you had anything to do with that whistle. Herb's now counting how many times we say his name. We might have to get a Herb counter graphic made. What was the over-under in Vegas that we would say Herb? on the broadcast. I hope you mash the over. And if you didn't, lesson learned. McCallum takes over at their own 48-yard line. Dunham, direct snap, runs with it across the 45 into Trojan territory. We've got a flag. A reminder, if you're just joining us, KVU News, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. every night, seven days a week. Including tonight? Including tonight, wow. Jeff. okay. And Jeff, my expectation is I'll get to watch you on TV tonight. I can do that. Do a little sports. I live up to expectations most of the time. Maybe Don't some highlights too from high. this ball game. Definitely some highlights from this ball game. If you haven't seen enough Ed Small on the stream, you can see some Ed Small on the big screen. Small on the big screen. Just sounds right. 322 left in this ball game. Second down and 18 from the night zone 40. They got pushed back a little bit. Butler back in the ball game, finds a seam, and he's back over, out across the Trojans 45. Just like that, picks up what was lost, a down a go. Third down and three. Dunham hands it back to Butler. 
And Jeff, at this point, you just have to assume, without any intel downfield level, it was a cramp. Yeah, I mean, it's great that he's back, and you're right, you do have to assume it was a cramp. Uh, glad, g cramp, and glad to see him back in action. He is a big part of this offense, and one of the bright spots that we've seen so far tonight. Dunham on first and ten, back to Butler, and Butler had space, but he gets tripped up. Across midfield, Jake Labo, the junior for the Trojans, making that stop. Can the Knights find the end zone? Two minutes to go, down 42 to nothing. Week one of the Texas high school football season. And you are streaming it live right here on KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Dunham hands it off to Andrews. Andrews, spin cycle. Cleaning some of that dirt off the Trojans' white uniform forms, white jerseys. Buck 30 on the clock. It's ticking. Gammerdinger. Can his team find the end zone or get points? Clock keeps ticking. Andrews comes off the field. Out comes Butler. Butler in the backfield. You've got everyone on offense looking at their play cards. What do we have in store here? Something special. Dunham in the shotgun. Dumps it off to Butler. Butler with speed. Great tackle there. Yep. Far side. Yep. Noah Saldivar, the junior, trips him up beautifully. I love to see these kids still playing hard. I hear the coaches still coaching hard to our left up here in the booth. Uh, it's just, right now it's about finishing. And it's also about getting points on the board. They have 45 seconds left in this game to do just that. But, you know, you want to see the fight, and we've seen the fight. Nobody wearing blue is let up in this matchup. Fourth down and two, 30 seconds to go. Last chance for the Knights, and they're just going to push forward. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you guys are able to hear, but sorry if... Uh, any background noise picked up there that, that wasn't what you expected. Uh, got a lot of passion going on in this, in, this, in this booth, and I understand why. I'm big on passion, Jeff. It's a rivalry game. You know, things are a little lopsided, and you get things going in the right direction, and you see the yellow flag on the field. It's not what you want to see. Setting up about a fourth and seven. Of course, they're going to go for it. Fourth and seven from the 38. 28 ticks left on the clock. Ten-second runoff because of the offensive penalty, so they're setting 18 seconds on the clock here, and this could be the last, maybe second-to-last play of the game. Fourth and seven from the 38. Dunham, shotgun. He's got Butler behind him. Two-step drop, dumps it off to Butler. Butler with some blocking up field for a sideline. Stayed inbounds. McMillian makes the tackle. And that'll probably be the ball game. Seven, six, five. That'll do it. Anderson kicks off the Texas high school football season by winning the 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl in dominant fashion, 42 to nothing over the McCallum Knights. So a great play from Ed Small, from uh, Jack Middleton. Some players stepped up and made big plays. Ed Bamba on McCallum and a couple of those McCallum running backs as well, as well as the interior of the McCallum offensive line. We saw some great players making plays tonight. Uh, it's an excellent start to high school football this year, Tom. For the fourth time in the last five seasons, it is the Trojans on the winning side of the Taco Shack Bowl. 51st all-time meeting between these two rivals, as you see the McCallum Knights in royal blue and Anderson Trojans in white shaking hands, midfield, rivals, but sportsmen at the end of the day. Anderson opens the season with a 1-0 record, a dominant 42 to nothing victory over the rivals. McCallum opens with an 0-1 record. But Jeff, that being said, no better way to start the high school football season than with you by my side with one of the best rivalries in all of Central Texas. 
some tacos, some shacks, <laughs> and some football. We talking Radio Shack, Love Shack, Shack O'Neill. I think the Love All Shack. The you see the hand sh shacks, shakes. Hand shakes, hand shacks. Milk shacks. Can't milk forget shakes. Corey on the camera, Johan on the live stream, and Herb filling in all the gaps. Thank you, thank you, Herb. Hey, Appreciate Jeff you. Jones. I'm Tyler Feldman. Once again, it's Anderson 42, McCallum nothing. 22nd annual Taco Shack Bowl favors the Trojans this time. It's 9.59. We'll see you all on TV in about 15 or 20 minutes. Once again, you've been streaming for the first time ever. KVU's Friday Football Fever on Thursday. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your night. And we've got Friday Football Fever tomorrow job, night on KVU. Job, we'll see you then.